What's going on everyone? Welcome to Classy Tacos. Thanks for stopping by. Today's the day. Miso's overhead hex rack is going to get installed. And today's another big day because we're going to do a giveaway. So I ordered two of these because I want to give one away to one of my lucky subscribers. And what you need to do to win is go ahead and subscribe here. Um, and then follow me on Instagram, classy underscore tacos. I'll put the link in my description. I will also have it here for you so you can easily find me. What's going to happen is once I get past 3,000 subscribers, I'm giving one away. And what you're going to get is the full Miso Hex Rack kit. Um, you're going to get the handle retention kit. And you're going to get my box and the tool that comes in it because Miso sent me two kits in one box. So you're going to get all of that. So the first thing we're going to do today is just break open the box, kind of go through what comes in the box. And then I'm going to kind of walk you through my setup and how I want to set stuff up. So it's going to be a little bit different than most as usual. It's going to take a little bit of work. So I want to give one away because I really appreciate everybody out there. So just thank you so much for all the support. All right, so let's just break open the box and kind of show you what comes in the kit and, you know, what you're going to get when you win. So I already cut mine open. So I wanted to look and see, and I'll be honest with you, so... Mine, the, the one I'm keeping, so it's a little custom because what I ended up doing was I just painted it to, um, you know, match the truck. So nothing big, just some spray paint. I just did that last week, you know, in preparation for what's going to go down today. So the one you're going to win is sitting right here. You're going to win this nice black one. That way you can paint it, you know, whatever color you want. And then sitting in here is two handle retention kits. One's going to be for you. I'm keeping one of them. Throw that off to the side. Then right here you have two install screws, so I'm going to give one to you, and that's going to go in this tool, and that's what's going to help you set the uh, rib nuts in place. So I'm keeping one for me, and then this is kind of the hardware kit to actually install um, into the side. So I've got two here, and putting one back in the box for you. So I got all this off to the side. Let me keep the tool out because we're going to need it, and what I'm going to end up doing is... I'm just going to throw this back in here for now to get it out of the way. All right, so let's throw this up here. So you can kind of see what we're going to do because the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and get the handles out of the truck. So let me get you in the truck and we'll remove those handles because the handles could be a little bit of rough. The reason why this took me so long to do is I was waiting on sound deadening and insulation. So I did the ceiling. Um, last week underneath the headliner in preparation for this install. So I've already had these removed So I know what a struggle it is Essentially, you're gonna pull down and there's these clips right here, right? And the way that Toyota decided to do this is the inner section of this clip Pushes in to like a metal grabby little piece and that's what locks this in so in, you have to remove this clip They don't like to come out easy, right? So once you get This clip off you'll see Kind of the metal piece in there if you just kind of can pry into the metal piece and remove one of the clips it will uh, let you kind of get it down sometimes they're a little harder than others but just stay with it and you'll get you'll be able to get in there and see the clip see even though i've already had these off it's still a pain so let's do the top one here all right, so the, there you can see where the clip stayed inside, right? If you end up like this where the clip stays inside, just push down on them and they will slide out. Perfect. So we're going to go set up our tool and, you know, get our rib nuts in. Right. So just real quick, I wanted to give everybody a heads up on how to use this tool. Kind of makes it a little easier to center everything. If you uh, get a couple threads in, put it in here. If you just do this, this kind of leaves it a little kind of loose, kind of flimsy, and it kind of makes it a little hard to center. If you hold the bolt, kind of thread it down as much as you can, it'll make it a little tighter in there, and it'll kind of stay in there, and that'll help you kind of guide it into the center better. So just hold the bolt, screw it down as much as it'll go, and that way it's not loose, not all flimsy flapping around in there, right? Then put it in, that'll help you get it in the center. So, you know, square hole, round nut, you want to make sure it's in the center. It's going to help when you align everything later on, okay? So since it looks like my headliner is like a tiny little bit off, I'm going to push up on the headliner, slide this in there, and just kind of try your best get it in the center. Once you feel like you're good, go ahead and crush. Good crushing and done. I'm going to pull this out. And just like that, 
It looks like I'm pretty much dead nuts in the center there. So I like that. One more time. Bolting this in. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push up on the headliner. To force this guy in here and then center up on that hole. Boom. Just like that. That one's dead nuts in the center. So now both of them are in the center. I'm going to go work on that side. You guys don't got to watch that. But that way, this is ready to go. All right. So here we are on the bench. Both of our rib nuts are in and done. Let's get into our handle retention kit. So here are the handles. One of them has a spring on it. The other one doesn't, just so you're aware. Uh, we're going to push these down. So these pieces here, um, they go on the inside. So it's going to be, and they kind of have to go a certain way. You'll kind of see it looks like, boom, right there. Perfect. So you see, looking at this like this, this one went in pretty easy. I just happened to line that up perfectly. But you see there's a little square cutout right there, and then square cutout here, and then a little round loop here, and a little round cutout right there. So you're just going to line those up and get those in. And this is the spacer that goes up against. So your hex rack It's going to kind of sit this way, right? So let's get both of those on both sides. Now we have these pieces here. Um, if you open this up, you can kind of see that it kind of rounds, it's kind of flat on one side and kind of round on the other side. So you're just going to find one that is perfect, perfect, just like that. And then that way too, see how it slides into the space perfectly because the space is round and flat. So boom, now we got this one is a spring, so you're going to have to hold this one. Same thing, flat and round right in. Perfect. This one is going to be this guy. Find the flat side. All right, perfect. So right now, both of these are set up and ready. So really, if you were just going to throw the rack up right now, you'd be done. We'd kind of go walk through how to set this up, the spacers, the mounting screws, and the washers. But we're going to get into a little something different. So I'm going to throw the rack up here and kind of walk through what I plan on doing. So just looking at this rack, the way that this is set up, you're kind of, with what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to gain as much space as I can going backwards. So essentially what I plan on doing is I want to run this as the front and this as the back. Because if you look, this has a little bit of an angle and it kind of pushes the rack a little bit forward. Um, I want to say that when I looked at this and I tested it, either way would work fine. This is just the way that I need it because what we're planning to do, guys, is run these AR wall mounts on this rack right so what i need to do is guarantee that i can get one spot in here right where i can use rib nuts here and then put a metal back in here and then run the same mount over here like this and that way we're going to run two ars kind of going this way and then have enough room for a pouch here in the center and then also run this set up here like this so this is just going to be a magnet right here that i'm going to bolt right here and run this pouch kind of right here in the center so that's going to kind of be the setup um let me just explain a couple things real quick with this setup i have a couple ars and a couple different sizes that we're going to run once it's installed to show you and what they'll look like kind of going forward um very important if you do this setup if you're going to buy ar wall mounts make sure that it's a lockable mount because there's some that just bolt onto the wall and you just drop the magazine and it kind of flimsy and shakes around it's going to be in the car if you're ever going to run it like this so make sure that it's lockable as in like you have to hit the mag release to remove it from here that way it gives you some security um while you're driving around also just to be straight up and up front this is for fun i'm not going to run like two ars like this every day this is going to be like if i want to go um to the range or i'm going to private land to go shooting but i will never run like this on a daily every day because you're just asking for trouble if you do do not think i'm going to be running like this all the time okay so this is kind of the setup what i'm trying to do in order to run things like this this one's going to be pretty easy this one might be fairly easy we'll get to that one in a second these are going to be a little bit more difficult um primarily because of how i want them set up kind of as to the front as possible to give me enough room this way with the butt stocks, okay? I'm going to start by marking these holes. Real quick, too, the one thing I didn't mention, these specific mounts, not only do they lock in 
to the mag holder, but they also lock in on both sides, okay? That's important too, that it locks in on both sides because in order to run these both pointed the same way and have the ARs face the same way, you needed to be able to lock in on both sides. If it didn't lock in on both sides, you'd be running this one like this, and that doesn't make sense, right? Because the AR is gonna hit here. In order to run it like this, they have to lock on both sides. So that's why I went with this brand, okay? Just making sure you know that, lock on both sides. All right, so right here, I'm drilling my holes, making sure everything is lined up, and then here in a second, I'm gonna get the rib nut tool and uh, get my rib nuts in. For the mounts, I did use a 516 bolts, but that would require you to open up the holes in the wall mount just a little bit. All right. So right now, both of our rib nuts are in and tied in on the bottom. Now we're gonna work on the upper setup. So right here for the upper mounts, I bolted in the bottom ones just to give me a secure uh, setting so that I can make sure to get the uh, upper mounts right. And I'm just using a nut and a locking washer uh, with a piece of brass I put some holes into and again using the same 516 bolts. Right here I've moved on to installing the magnet and I decided not to center it. It's up pushed over to the passenger side just a little bit so it makes it easier for me to reach back from the driver's seat to grab anything. Right here you can see how the zippers uh, line up perfectly with the magnet and the magnet is lined up with the edge of the bag so it kind of worked out pretty good and then the magnet won't be in the way of the zippers. Added a little bit more security with the zip ties. Alright guys so after all that work I think we're kind of set up on exactly how I want it. Um, I got the magnet kind of over off to the side a little bit. Uh, I didn't want it to get away in the way of the zippers here. There could potentially be more spots here for stuff, but we're gonna get it in like this. And then we'll kind of kind of take it from there and figure out how it works from here. So before we throw it in the truck, I did uh, kind of clean down some of the bolts. What I used was uh, one inch bolts. Uh, Three quarter inch might have been a little bit better and you wouldn't have had to make any cut. So I just wanted to make sure they were smooth and not poking up too much. All right, so just real quick, since I'm running solo, this is how I kind of have this hooked up on this side. I'm gonna go bolt that side in first and then work my way back here. Um, and that way this will be held up right here. Just a little strap through the handle. So I'm gonna get us set up inside here. And then just nice and easy. It's really nice that that's being held up over there. But let me get my number four, by the way. Get my number four set up. Perfect. Just like this. And let's see, did I get? There you go. Got a couple of threads in there. Perfect. All right, so. Bolt. <laughs> and, uh, open this. This is the spring loaded one, so this one's a bit of a pain. And, uh, push it through. Get your spacer on the back. And get your number four. Perfect. So just like that, we got a couple in there. I'm gonna leave that loose and we're gonna slide over to the other side. All right. I'm gonna try to get this side in. Um, I give it a couple tries, it's a little rough. So just be prepared that the second side is uh, gonna be a little rough to uh, get stuff onto. So, and the issue here really is trying to get this high up enough. And like, <sighs> Push this up enough that I can get the bolt. Just like I can't even get to where I can screw this in. And then as soon as you kind of also uh, very hard to see. So back in here. As soon as I think I got it, I'm like, nah, not there. And I'm trying to do like force and push and get this going this way and I've got nothing. I'm pretty sure that's not in at all so yeah no. 
we, we didn't make it. We didn't make it. But I was also about to give up and I got it. Nice. Alright. I hate hot backwards. Alright, cool. Let's uh let's see how rough this one's gonna be. Well, this should be really fun. So that's in the hole there. Then this guy here. Twist this. Here, not so far in, and then what we're gonna have to do here is push this one up. I will right, see. I'm gonna have to call reinforcements on this one. Man, that looks good though. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so for this last one. So close. So close. Oh, we got it, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we're going to Let's tighten this one up. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Nice. Now let's get to the, you know, the best part, dude. Let's do some test fitting. Enough with the empty rack. All right, so up first is Frankenstein build here. It's a side charge and it's clear. So everybody sees it's clear. So from here, this one is what I was thinking is gonna go, right? Oh yeah, boys. Looking good. It's locked into place. I got enough room back here, not too bad. The one thing I should mention about doing anything like this, obviously the passenger here isn't gonna work, but you know, whatever. Um, it's gonna be a little tight. Um, if you don't have AMB release for the magazines, so this one doesn't, I need to put this one pointed this way because of the side charge. Um, you're gonna have to come over the top to release the magazine, okay? So release, and then it comes out. So now that one is clipped in place. It'll kind of wiggle, but it will not go anywhere. Let's try that side now. All right, so just to make sure that we're clear here, this is legit SBR with a 308 spec or uh, suppressor. We're clear. So this one is a little tight, and it's really because... I'm running up into the buttstock is hitting the clip back in here. The suppressor, it's not too bad. It is rubbing up against there. But this will give you an idea of what this looks like here. Yeah, it almost since the, the it kind of curves down here. So once you get past that curve, you're gonna hit that. It does work, it fits, um, but depending on the length of your buttstock, you know, you are gonna have issues back in here and it's really kind of running rubbing up against this clip so let's get this one off and we'll see if we can get a uh, full size in here real quick so all right so let's see so for full size let's see if you can see this this is started life as a sig m400 there's not much of it left but it is a full size with an advanced armament just a 556 uh, suppressor let's do uh, just so that we're all together here <laughs> Same page, we're clear. 
one's going to be a little tight. And for anybody who's actually done any type of small team operations, you know how hard it is to run a 16 inch barrel inside of a vehicle, especially, you know, if you got a crew with you and everybody's geared up. So right there, that's about as much as I want to push this. It is very tight. Um, if there was a way to space these out and drop it down, it could potentially fit. But right there, it is, you know, running up pretty hard against here. I mean, I can continue to push when I'm hitting the clip back here. So for a full size, it is going to be a little tight. Um, and there it is. So it looks like the kind of pistol. And if you have a SBR, it will work because you don't have to worry about the back kind of this bend or this bend up here. The full size, I mean, I could possibly shove it in and force it, but I don't want to. So you can tell right now, I think that this one's going to be a little too big. All right, guys, full setup. We're done just like that. Uh, don't get me wrong. It looks pretty cool. But remember, I'm not running this like this. This is just to see if it could work heading out to the range or going to go shooting. I can set these up like this, have some room in the back seat, not have them covered in boxes. If you need these quickly, it's going to be a problem because, you know, going from the driver to here quickly, it's going to be an issue. If you're sitting in the middle, or you're here or you got buddies with you, you know, you're good. You can probably pull this off. Don't forget. Make sure you like, subscribe, go follow me on Instagram. Once we get past 3,000, I'm giving away a full kit for free. Someone out there is going to get a full Miso Hex Rack kit for free. So don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys be safe out there.